you ready for the RTX 4060? Huh? Are you ready for China's new GPU? It can, uh, it can game a little bit. And AMD's non-X Ryzen 7000 series. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brit host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And today's top story is about the RTX 4060 with us getting some details out of Lenovo China's gaming desktop product planning manager, and then providing some details on what would be likely a hotly anticipated card, the RTX 4060. The RTX 4090 is incredibly expensive. The 4080 even more so compared to its predecessors. The RTX 4070 and 4070 Ti have yet to be unveiled and the RTX 4060 likely to be a more mainstream chip. And according to Lenovo's manager, they're saying that the RTX 4060 will be barely a step up over the RTX 3060 to the tune of about 20% or so, which would put it on par with the RTX 4070. However, the power consumption will be lower. It'll have all of the new features. However, Nvidia will also increase the price to be about the price of the RTX 3060 Ti. This is according to the Lenovo manager who says that this is a lot of educated guessing, not necessarily based on something NVIDIA is directly communicated, but could be anticipatory on Lenovo's side in order for them to figure out how they're going to sell these RTX 40 series cards. So the RTX 4060 being about 20% faster, but costing about 10% more, which is not necessarily a huge gain for end consumers overall, and kind of goes with the theme that NVIDIA has been bringing with the RTX 40 series. Extra performance, but for a lot more money. Would you pay an RTX 3060 Ti price for an RTX 3070 level performance because it's the RTX 4060? Let me know down below in the comments. However, one of the things to note is that uh, they're also expecting that this will come out in June and not necessarily anytime soon. So you don't have to worry about this hypothetical reality for at least half of year while Nvidia tries to milk the money out of the milk bags of money people, money bags. They're trying to milk the money bags. That's what I was trying to say. But you know what's a better deal than that? Today's video is sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by the Soundcore VR P10 wireless gaming earbuds specifically designed for VR, but has a lot of other tremendous applications, which we discovered as we were using it because these things are ultra low latency using Soundcore's lightning sync wireless tech that allows them to get less than 30 milliseconds of latency when using the connected dongle. So there's no noticeable lag time between the visuals and the audio, whether you're playing on something like the Meta Quest 2, which these are the first made for Meta low latency true wireless gaming earbuds. And they're also the first earbuds authorized by Meta. And that's because they use a customized chipset to enable high speed data processing the optimized protocol stacks to find the shortest data transmission route and the latest LC3 codec to make sure that the higher sound quality is there at the lower data rates, which this is amazing for VR. We let Kyler try it out on his Quest 2 and he absolutely loved them. But one of the things that we've discovered that these things are phenomenal for is actually video editing in Premiere Pro. What we've discovered is that there's too much latency between the timeline that we're editing on and the wireless headsets that we're using, where is the sound core VRP 10s actually allow us to edit in real time because of that sub 30 millisecond latency. And these things are great to use on multiple devices. You can use them on your Meta Quest 2, but then you can also simultaneously connect it to your phone so that if you have a phone call that comes in, you can automatically answer it while you're still playing your game. And it'll use sound mixing to make sure that the game's audio is still there while you're taking your phone call. But you can also get a second dongle that allows you to connect it to something like your PC your PlayStation 5, etc., and then you can just switch between platforms using the Soundcore app. And these things also sound great. They've got 11 millimeter drivers that allow you to have a great audio experience, up to six hours of playtime with 24 hours in the charging case. The Soundcore VR P10s are great for your VR experience, also great for literally everything else, and then Soundcore makes it easy to switch it between everything on their app. So check them out at the link in the video description. Big thanks to Soundcore for sponsoring today's video, check out the VRP attends down below. And you could connect those VRP 10 earbuds to the upcoming RTX 4050 laptop that's getting unveiled from Samsung. It looks like this is gonna be combined
along with a 13th gen chip, 13700H, and the RTX 4050 GPU, which is gonna be on this next gen Galaxy Book Pro. This is not uncommon for Nvidia to launch their laptop GPUs well before their desktop GPUs. The RTX 3050 was out in laptops for over a year before it ever came to desktop. But based on the Puget Bench benchmarks, it does appear like the 4050 is between 17 and 32% faster than the RTX 3050 at the same task. So it does seem to be a decent upgrade, but if the 4060 thing is anything to look at, it's likely gonna cost a pretty penny more. And Nvidia is really trying to re-scramble all of that money into their coffers because according to the Q3 earnings reports, they're not doing as hot as they were previously. They're down 17% from a year ago in revenue and down 12% from Q2, as well as being down 72% in gap earnings per diluted share, but up 4% from the previous quarter. Nvidia CFO saying that their new Ada Loveless GPU architecture has been an exceptional launch. The first Ada GPU, the GeForce RTX 4090, became available in mid-October at a tremendous demand and positive feedback from the gaming community. We sold out quickly in many locations and are working hard to keep up with demand. But that doesn't appear enough to stymie the loss that they have from all of the mining GPUs not necessarily being sold anymore because client GPUs are down quite a bit, down 23% from the previous quarter and 51% from the same time a year ago, which Nvidia is trying to convince people that this is gamers not buying as many GPUs, but considering the pricing of graphics cards just a year ago, I don't think that as many people were picking them up that were just regular people who had disposable income. But all signs point to Nvidia liking to group miners and gamers into the same product category to say that their sales are really up when in fact they were actually only up on mining. And now that that's over, they're seeing a huge decline, even though they will not say that. However, data center sales for Nvidia do appear to be up. There are 1% increase over the previous quarter and 31% from the same time last year. So Nvidia seeing some improvements, a lot of regression in the client sector, but they do expect that they should continue to grow in the fourth quarter, especially as their RTX 40 series GPUs are gonna be more available. The 4090 was only available for two weeks out of an entire quarter of Q3, and the RTX 4080 is now out. Likely not gonna see the RTX 4070 Ti be available in Q4, but hopefully the 4080 and 4090 might help to bolster some of Nvidia's revenues a little bit. But there's more competition in the GPU market than ever. More Threads GPU, the MTT S80 that we've talked about in previous episodes of Hot News, is finally getting benchmarked, and it turns out that it's it's something. This is the world's first PCI Express Gen 5 GPU. It actually is quite a looker. I actually really love the design of it. However, it performs like a GTX 1060 or an RX 5 in a lot of titles at 1080p low, it can get 213 FPS in CSGO, 144 in League of Legends, and 180 in Crossfire, which are not great numbers. However, because of the architecture that the S80 is built on, it can only support 11 games with 60 more confirmed working, but it's not optimized. So as is with any new architecture, it takes a little bit to get some support for it. So more threads is likely going to be developing this as time goes on, but it's not a bad start for China's first domestically produced graphics card. It is significantly slower than the RTX 3060, which is 145% faster than the S80 at 1080p. So likely don't go out and try to buy this. I do expect to see reviews, hopefully from the likes of Linus or Gamers Nexus, if they can pick it up from overseas. But it does appear to be a good way of bringing more competition to the market, even if it's not competing with modern GPUs, it's at least a start to bring it to Chinese customers. And are you a customer of crypto stocks? Hopefully, Bitcoin up a little bit to be at 16,673, Ethereum down a little bit to be at $1,200, and Dogecoin down just a little bit to be at 8.4 cents. However, I was down yesterday because Reese didn't have any UFD deals for us because he got load shedded and he had to go to Starbucks to even upload the thumbnail for hot news yesterday. But what do you got for us today, friend? Hey everyone, welcome back to UFD Deals. You're bringing the hottest tech deals out on the internet. It's a freaking week to go until Black Friday, but don't worry, we've got you covered with some killer deals already. Like if you want to pick up a bunch of little things, the Steel Series Prism Caps, which are their double shot pudding style keycaps, are currently going for $14.99, which is a whole 50% off. And speaking of little things, the Height Revolt 3, which is their small form factor ITX case, which comes bundled with a 700 watt 80 plus gold power supply, is currently going for $170.99, which is 32% off. And continuing the Height deals, we have the Height Y60, which is what I like to call the Instagram PC. I'm seeing it everywhere at the moment. You can pick this up currently for $159.99, which is 20% off. And don't 
don't worry that it's back ordered, it's covered by Newegg's Black Friday price protection. And lastly, we have the Gigabyte Aero 16X E5, which has a 16 inch 4K AMOLED display. Specs wise, it's rocking an Intel Core i7 12700H, NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3070 Ti, 16 gigs of DDR5, and a one terabyte SSD. This gorgeous looking laptop is currently going for 1299, which is a whole 46% off or 1150 dollars and you guys know the drill you can find the links to all these and more in the video description and with that back to the rest of your hot news cheers thank you great deals that's amazing what's also amazing is wi-fi 7 is coming tp link announcing their first ever wi-fi 7 router for homes and enterprises this thing I like the design of this. However, that's not the only one they released, but the flagship one that they're talking about has a quad band 24 gigabit per second Wi-Fi 7 with two five gigahertz bands, as well as having dual 10 gig LAN ports on the back of it, as well as four 2.5 gig LAN ports on the back. This thing is a mighty fine router. Obviously, Wi-Fi 7 beginning its rollout as of right now, likely not many client devices that are gonna support it until a few years from now. But in case you wanna get on the forefront, it's only gonna set you back a cool 700 bones. But what's gonna be a little bit cheaper is AMD's upcoming non-X CPUs. Rumors are indicating that the 7900, 7700, and 7600 are expected to launch in Q1 of next year, likely to be announced at CES with significantly lower pricing than what the current CPUs actually have. Clock speeds likely will be lower. As you can see right here, the 7900 will have 200 megahertz lower on the boost clock and 900 megahertz lower on the base clock, but will cost a $120 less than the 7900X. The 7700 will be about 100 megahertz lower in the boost clock and 700 megahertz lower in the base clock, but costs $70 less. But the real deal is the 7600 coming in at only $229, which is 900 megahertz lower on the base clock and 200 megahertz lower on the boost clock. Again, this is a rumor, but it does indicate that AMD might be taking seriously the more value oriented options for the Ryzen 7000 series, considering the weak sales that they have been seeing this might be the way that they get gamers to switch over, only spending $230 on the CPU. However, motherboards are still gonna cost you at least that much because B650s still aren't that cheap. But let me know, are you interested in the non-X versions of these CPUs? Would you buy these if they do end up coming out over their X counterparts despite lower clock speeds? However, you do get that cheaper price. I wanna hear from you down below in those comments and you'll be hearing from me for some videos this weekend. We'll have videos coming out, but then also hot news on Monday.